Welcome again to our recorded discussion. Last time we talk, we talk about the um, system development life cycle, the five stages of the system development life cycle. This is a continuation. So I am your uh, discussant, Professor Rebecca R. Okay, so let us recall first the five phases of the system development life cycle. We have first is the system analysis, second, conceptual design, third, physical design, fourth, implementation and conversion, the fifth, which is operation and maintenance. Now let's talk about the players of the system development life cycle and the players who are uh, responsible for the successful implementation of this AIS. So we have several players in the system development life cycle. We have the top management, the accountants, the information system, or the steering committee, or the IT department. We have also the project development teams, the system analysts, the computer programmers, and the external players. So let's go here and detail. So top management. So top management role in system development is to provide support and encouragement and a clear signal that user involvement is important. They will also help align the systems with corporate strategies, establish system goals and objectives, review the information system department performance and leadership. They will also be responsible in establishing policies for project selection and organizational structure, and of course, participate in important system decisions. So in every system development life cycle, the top management must be the one who is responsible for the overview of the SDLC cycle because if the management will not help or will not cooperate or, or not um, active or participate on the system development, okay, the, the, of course the project will not really, really good in the implementation phase. So it needs the, um, the top management to over especially on the selection of the project okay user management needs of course to determine information requirements for departmental projects assist system analysts with project cost benefits estimates assign key staff members to develop projects and allocate funds now let's go to the accountants okay accountants play an important role in system development because, of course, we are yeah, we are the accountants. We are the user of AIS, so we know the information needs and the requirements of the system, and we can communicate it to the system develop developers or the IT. So uh, we are part of the members. We are members of the project development team or the steering committee. Uh, you can help now management and development process, and we are also active in designing system controls because, of course, part of our work is to audit now we have, we have some control monitor and testing these controls ensuring that the system is easy to audit and controls and auditability it's very important no it's not it must be built in even in the early phase no to minimize cost and efficient later during the operational stage already okay next the information system or the steering committee the Information System Steering Committee is an executive level committee whose duty is to plan and oversee the information system function. So it consists of high level management such as the controller, the information system manager, the user department managers. So they are the one who will set policies to govern the AIS and assure top management participation, guidance, and control. They also attempt not to encourage goal congruence and reduce goal conflict. Of course, no? Next, the project development team. So the project development team includes the system specialists, the managers, accountants, auditors, users, whose responsibility is to guide the development. So their, pro their job is plan each project, monitor to ensure timely, cost-effective comple completion, ensure the human element is considered, we will not um, even it's already computerized, but there must be that human element. So there must be some uh, consideration on the approving part of the system. So dapat merong rule ang human there, no? ang supervisor or the manager. So there must be some uh, approval, even it's already automated. 
Okay. Communicate project status to top management and steering committee. Com communicate and meet with users to consider ideas, discuss project progress, eliminate surprises. And also the team approaches produ approach produces more e effective results and better user acceptance. Now we have the system analyst. The system analyst study existing system, design use new ones, and prepare specifications that are used by programmers. First, they interact with technical personnel and users to bridge the gap okay, between the IT and the accountant because they have several different views. They are responsible for ensuring the system meets user needs. Computer programmers. Um, the programmers write the computer programs you know, using the specs developed by the system analysts. They also modify and maintain existing programs. So they debug the program. They are the one who will encode the program. So make sure that the, the coding must be documented so that if the computer programmer were, were especially if it is an in-house system, if the pro computer programmer would go out from the company, it's very difficult for the for the debugging of the system. Okay, so there must be proper documentation on, especially on the coding side of your program. Then we have also the external players. So who are these external players? So it includes customers, vendors, auditors, and the governmental entities. So their needs must also be met in system development. Now let's go to the tactics used in planning the development of the system. So still we are in the system development life cycle. So we have some techniques. No? So several activities must be performed at various times throughout the SDLC. So one of these activities is planning, which is very important. This is the phase, one part of the first phase no? of the system development life cycle. So the organization should have plans for the long range for each system development project, each phase of each system development project. So we'll discuss these plans and of course we will enumerate the techniques now to how to develop the, uh, the planning system development. Okay. So we've all experienced the disasters that occur when we fail to plan. Okay, so planning is very important. Uh, we have some situations that without proper planning, we cannot achieve our goal. No? So for example, uh, you bought a personal computer on impulse. So you are impulse, you are impulse buyer you know, without thinking about what you wanted to do with it. And then when you get home, you realize it wasn't compatible with your existing printer and scanner. So, furthermore, it wasn't equipped for broadband internet access and you had been hoping to switch to broadband. So, by the time you spend the money and buy the parts to equip the computers to do what you want it to do, you find that you could have bought a leading edge computer for less money. So, it's very important to plan what you do. You, know? you look on the specs you want. You will also plan for the future, whether you especially in our in this case you need to list down what you need you know, what are the possible actions what would be the possible or alternative uh, solutions you know. so it's very important that planning is a must even in even in our study so it's also very important so also planning in the system development so system development planning is an important step for the following key reasons. We have enumerated five reasons. First is consistency. Consistency with the organization's strategic plan. Efficiency. You can only achieve it through coordination of the subsystem. Cutting edge technology and techniques. But also to lower the cost no, due to lack of duplication, wasted efforts, time overruns, and cost overruns. And of course, adaptability for future change. When a system is poorly planned, a company must often return to a prior phase and correct errors and design flaws. So when, when it will happen, uh, that returns are costly and of course, results in delays, frustrations, and low morale. So there are two types of system development plans which are needed. We have the individual project plans 
which is developed by the project teams, and we have also the master plan, which is developed by the Information Systems Steering Committee. So let's go to the individual project. So the individual project plans contains cost-benefit analysis, developmental and operational requirements, including the human resource, the hardware, the software, the financial resources, and also include a schedule of activities to develop and operate the new application. The second type is a master plan, which is developed by the Information Systems Steering Committee. So a master plan specifies what the system will consist of, how it will be developed, who will develop it, how needed resources will be acquired, where the AIS is headed. It also provides status of project in process, prior prioritization of planned projects and criteria for establishing priorities, and also timetables for development. So, in planning system, system projects with highest priority are first to be developed. Okay, these decisions are made by top management. And also, you have some planning horizon, maybe three years plan, five years plan. It depends upon the, the, the management. And of course, there are updates of at least two to three times a year, even more frequently in some companies. So the chief information officer or the CIO should determine how soon technologies will be in wide use, whether the company should adapt late or early, what business opportunities might arise from new technologies. So there are two techniques for scheduling and monitoring system development activities. They are the PERT or the Program Evaluation and Review Technique and we have also the Gantt Charts. So Program Evaluation and Review Technique or PERT, this is a diagram that requires all activities in a project be identified along with the activities that precede and follow them. So these activities used to draw a PERT diagram which consists of a network of arrows and nodes. So arrows represent the activities that require time and resources while nodes represent completion and initiation of activities. So we have an example later. The critical path in the PERT diagram is the path requiring the great, greatest amount of time. So if an activity on the critical, critical path is delayed, the whole project is delayed. So you need to determine what are the critical paths in your uh, system development cycle, life cycle. So resources may be shifted to the critical path to reduce the delay. So our example here, this is a sample per chart. We have uh, designing a birdhouse. Okay, so each block on contains a task and a time estimate, may include best time, worst time, and average time. And you will indicate who will be responsible for the task. So we have here, buy wood and nails, build a base. Your target is to design a birdhouse, okay? And then you will also buy paint. We have also build the roof. You nail it together, you paint and decorate, you sell, okay? So there are people also enumerated here who will be the one who will do some activity. You can also use this in your uh, AIS or Accounting Information System Development Lifecycle. So from the Siguro from the top management, uh, going to the users, and then yeah, survey first on the users, and then going to the system analyst, etc., and the accountant and the developer and so on and so forth, until to the uh, finished project. Okay? And we have also the Gantt chart, which is another technique for scheduling and monitoring system development activities. So what is this Gantt chart? So a Gantt chart is a bar chart with project activities on the left and time across the top. For each activity, a bar of expected time is thrown. As activities are completed, the bar is filled in. The Gantt chart makes it easy to eyeball the chart and understand the current status of the project. But the chart does not show the relationship between activities like the per chart does. So we have an example of our Gantt chart. This is our Gantt chart. So you can put some... Uh, Labels, if it's complete, it's red, testing, it's blue, in development, that's yellow, and there is some milestone. You can 
that's your that some you enumerate the periods but in the in the gun chart there are no relationship unlike on the um birth okay thank you